Hi, this is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show, and this video is going to be the first in a series that we're going to do that we're calling Bad Science Theater, because we couldn't think of a better name. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually like that name. Um, so what we're going to be doing is dissecting bad science in science fiction. It doesn't have to be science fiction, actually. It could be in any fiction, but you know, we're going to be focusing on science fiction. Please. Um, and we're going to use as our template, if you will, and a... The low-hanging fruit the low hanging bad science. Fruit, <laughs> the, uh, as an example of the different kinds of problems that we are going to be dissecting from, uh, from movies, what, probably the worst science-offending science uh, fiction movie in recent memory Prometheus. Of all time. Yeah, may perhaps. This is, well, I mean, there's... Good competition you know, out there, but... There's Message from Space, which is pretty bad. But I think Prometheus, I, you know, if you... People love to bash it. There was, I, you know, there were so many people, including us, have previously done, uh, you know, rants about, like, all of the awful science gaffes in the movie. It's just amazing how bad it was. Um, so just, uh, the, we're going to talk about just some general principles. One principle is, um, you know, oftentimes when we do these kinds of reviews, we get feedback like, oh, it's science fiction. Who cares if the science yeah. is correct? Yeah. Wrong. That's wrong. I just completely disagree <laughs> we with that. We disagree. So <laughs> Wholeheartedly. It's, it's, you know, science is half of science fiction, right? It's one of the two words that make it up. Um, so yeah, so li listen, we don't we know it's fiction and we enjoy the fiction and we can enjoy it. I mean, like well, I love Star Wars even, even though it's all made up, you know, science-wise and technology and it's more magic than than science fiction. Yeah. That's fine. That's not the point. But if you have good science, especially if it's like a, supposed to be a hard science fiction, it actually can be a, a character in the writing, in the in the storytelling, and it actually makes for better storytelling. But at the very least if it's not a positive in the story, it shouldn't be a negative. Right. Like the right. bad sh side shouldn't be gratuitous. It shouldn't take you out of the movie. That's out my of number the story. one complaint. Yeah. Like, like uh, it, when you're watching something and you're thinking outside of the movie. Yeah. You know, it's it, you. You stop paying attention to the film and you're thinking to yourself now. And I, I, we, we've mentioned this many times on the show. Like I don't want the movie to break that illusion yeah. for me. Right. Well, and being si a little bit, even a little bit scientifically literate shouldn't inc greatly increase the odds of you just being taken out. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. come on, are you really doing that? You shouldn't know? be punishing your audience members right. for being scientific and literate. And I do think that part of good storytelling in any genre is that you believe it, right? You believe yeah. the world, you believe the characters, you buy into it. And when you're doing science fiction, science is part of that. If You can't believe the world, you can't yeah. believe the story. When when the science is like slapping you in the face that it's so bad, um, so we, you know some of the things we're going to be talking about are going to be uh, pedantic. It's going to be picky. Some are going to be glaring, like yeah, right. huge gaffes. It's partly for fun. It's partly because it's a good way to learn about science, which is something yeah. else that we do. Mm -hmm. But I do think, and I will stand by this, that good science is part of good science fiction. Without a doubt. And, and, and at the very least, it shouldn't be taking you out of your enjoyment of the fiction part of it. And right? Steve, you know, Hollywood has a system of getting to scientists to get this information, right? They, they've, there's no excuse. There's no excuse. There's more than enough scientists. In fact, there's... there's um, what do you, you know, there's uh, systems of scientists who are like, yeah, here we are, you know, tap into us. Sure. We, will, we will advise you on the science in your movies. Like, look at the, uh, look at the movie The Martian. Yeah. Right? Um, Andy. Weir. Andy yeah. Weir. He, he used, you know, social media to help him crowdsource mm -hmm. his information, and it worked out beautifully. You know, right. That was, a, that was a really inexpensive yep. way to get it done. Right. And if you, if you, and we talked about this there was really one kind of egregious scientific mistake in that, in that pretty much in that entire movie, really like in your face. And but that was that was for the plot. That what was, was it? That would well the fact that the winds could knock down yeah. could knock down the ship. Not gonna not gonna happen. The winds are that not was, nearly as powerful enough. But okay, but that was for the yeah. plot. And that's one hundredth of an atmosphere is not right. gonna do it. Exactly. It's it's just too thin to to, to get into I would argue that it. his his attention to science brought out aspects of the story that made it even better yes. than his original yes. idea. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. It 
really no, it was it, a character more than any other movie in recent history. Yeah, it was yeah. more of a character than anything else. And what's the what's the famous quote? I want to science the shit out of this. Yeah. I mean, it's, and he that's what Ware did in creating that. He sciences shit. And when out. He, when he did break the science, he did it deliberately. Yes. and knowingly because it was worth it for yeah. the yep. plot. Exactly. And if that's part then, of your like, art. Yeah. that's fine. Have at right, it. Right. So the the 180 degree movie is Prometheus. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Broke every single rule. Yeah. If if Pretty your much. body was a movie, this movie broke every bone in your body. Right. That's how bad it was. I will start with the first thing that happened that really made people people's jaws drop in the theater. Right. There was a lot of things in this. You mean movie. the first two seconds of the movie? Well, that there, part? but there was a lot of things that came across that we could talk about. But there are there's about. I counted and there's about ten really bad things in the movie. Yeah. And there's a hundred. There's a hundred unbelievably bad things in the movie that are not, 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 not so bad that everyone would notice. But one of the first ones, and the first thing that people were saying when we were walking out of the theater was, why did they take their helmets off? Yeah. You're in an alien planet. Just because you got clearance that the atmosphere is breathable doesn't mean that there isn't biology in that mm -hmm. atmosphere. They, they were going to a planet that they knew, there were hope that there was an alien presence on. Mm -hmm. And they took their helmets off. And I remember, I remember being in the movie with you guys, and we all freaked out when they did that. Yeah. We were all just like, what, what, you know, we were looking at each other like, no way would they take Think about this. Off. When we sent astronauts to the moon for the first time, when they came back, we put them in isolation for 14 days. Even though we thought that the moon was probably sterile, right? Just to be on the safe side. Right. They're going to an alien world that they think probably has alien life. Yeah. And they take their helmets yeah. off. But that is just the most egregious example of a, of a, of a generic problem with that movie, yes, and and you know what I'm saying. So exactly. you have you have a mission in which you you know you have a a, a billionaire trillionaire whatever he is at that time, uh, you know Wayland Industries mm -hmm. puts together a team of the best experts in the world to to pull off this mission, and there was a general level of incompetence. Yeah, and part of that incompetence was the carelessness with which they went about their mission. Mm -hmm. And that was just like the one that slaps you in the face first. But when you're thinking about it, it's like, gee, they're not taking, they're not proceeding with any caution. Yeah. They're just, let's just land over here. Let's go into that cave. Let's take our helmets off. You know, it's like there was no caution. There was, you didn't get any sense that they had a protocol, that they were worried about anything, mm -hmm. that they right. had any kind of, you know, safety measures in place. Like, no scientists would behave the way that they behave. No. I mean, you imagine you've got a basically a multi-trillion dollar Manhattan project to yeah. get these people to this other star system. You, they would have a book this big on protocols to preserve their life, to preserve the data that they're yeah. going to collect, to be good scientists. These are things that they would need to know. Right. And these, these are things that were just broken willy, kind of willy-nilly, just in service of the plot. Right. But, so, but Bob, that's it's worse it. than that, because even if Whalen, the, the trillionaire guy that funded this whole trip, even if he didn't manage the project well and his daughter didn't manage the project well right. at all, which they didn't, the scientists themselves would have been following their version of what their ultimate protocol would be, right? So as an example, the biologist would be the person saying, you can't take your helmet off right now. Egregious example yeah. of no scientist would do that. Again, talking about you have to believe the characters. I didn't believe any of the characters. Didn't yep. believe them. So you have a biologist who is on an alien world looking for alien life. And first of all, he's scared. Yeah for some reason, about aliens. So that wasn't believable. And then he comes across an alien species. Right. And so um, this is the- Cobra alien? The alien cobra, right? Yeah. So you have this, this you know, snake-like creature come up, and then he flares his frill, his yeah. neck. So, and the biologist's like, oh, isn't he cute? I'm a biologist, so I have no fear of biology. I'm just going to walk up to this thing and touch it. Yeah. No, if you're a biologist, then you would be thinking, that looks like a threat display. Yeah. This is, first of all, even if the thing looks innocent, yeah. that's some creatures look innocent so that you, they can lure, lure you in. in. Yeah. Oh, this creature is looking threatening. That's, I mean, you don't have to be a biologist. Your intuition is, that looks like a threat display. Yeah. And of course, it was. Yeah. And so he, he you know, did not, no scientist would have done that. I didn't believe that that character was a scientist for one nanosecond. Yeah. It was ridiculous. Yeah. And then speaking of scientists who I don't, or not believable characters, I don't believe them, there's the geologist, right? So the geologist has these, 
uh, a device that can automatically float through the. You know, they're like drones. drones. Yeah, they're drones that can scan, three dimensionally scan and map. A location. great idea, right? A yeah. great a cool idea, idea, great technology. So they could have scanned the cave before they went into sure, it. Sure, easily. You know, but they didn't do that. They go into the cave and then they send out the drone scans. And then this is the guy who, who gets, gets lost. lost. He gets lost. So the guy making the map doesn't use the map. Not that's so how do geologists exploring a cave not get lost? They follow their map. Yeah. Right. You can also follow your foot your footprints. You know, but. You would think that that would be a skill that this guy would have had, how he, no, not but to get lost. His protocol would have been to do all the things that yeah. you said. He would have put the drones in first. You have, you have autonomous things that can go in there and, and do their own thing. So what that means, so this is, the, this is the careless, thoughtless writing. Nobody was thinking, what would this character do? What would, you know, somebody who was an expert geologist in this situation, what would be a believable thing that they would do? And a good rule of thumb is when you're writing, or in lots of situations when you're lecturing or whatever, you don't have to know everything. You don't have to like write everything. You just have to be one step ahead of your audience, right? right? So you have to create the illusion of depth. If, if that guy did something, one thing, if any of the scientists did one thing, like, oh, that's a good idea, that would have given you the illusion that they were a thoughtful scientist who right. had a protocol, who knew shit, yeah. right? But when you're smarter than the scientist, when you're thinking, wow, that guy's dumb, don't do that. Yeah, of course. Then it's complete, you yeah. shatter, shatter the, the illusion, illusion. Totally the illu yeah. and there's no believability whatsoever. But That's was, just bad writing, let alone bad science and, fiction. And it was rampant in every type of scientist. So they yeah, had every archae archaeologist everyone, there, and everyone. the archaeologists don't follow any archaeological protocols. Yeah. Oh, here's, a, here's an artifact, let me pick us up and run with it. Yeah, you know? They, 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 they take no, the alien head, yeah. an ancient alien head, they shove it into a bag right out of the gate. Like even if they were in a rush, they just needed to get back to the ship because of the weather. Leave it alone. Yeah. Come back tomorrow. Don't grab it and shove it into a bag. Then they run it to the ship. And now, no, there is no protocol whatsoever for contamination. Yeah. Going both ways. You don't want to contaminate that article, and you don't want that article to contaminate you. Right. They bring it on the ship. Then they zap it to get rid of contamination. Then they stick an electrical jolt in it, and it reanimates. And then blows up. And then it blows up. None of these things made any sense whatsoever. <laughs> Why would it blow up? And, you know, you, I remember at this point right, in the movie, was, right, because we're bouncing around to, to a yeah. certain degree, but at that point in the movie, I realized I have to see it till, till it, it, the movie is over to continue to be in pain, right? Mm -hmm. I had to experience the whole thing. I didn't want to miss any, any of it, but I was mm -hmm. so disgusted. I remember just sitting there going, all right, first of all, this beloved brand, who the movie's being directed by, the guy that directed the first movie. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I realized in, that, in the theater that day that he doesn't know... Good story. He, it was gorgeous. He can shoot the. He could shoot he the, shot the hell out. He can shoot the hell out of any script he's given. But he is not good. He he should have been sitting there going, "This is not right. This is not good." He didn't have any of those red flags go up. No, it's like all the actors, all the characters were basically red red shirts, going from from stupid behavior to stupid behavior, and you know to to move the plot along to where where they wanted the plot to go. They, mm. I, I couldn't help but thinking of movies like, say, Aliens, where you've got characters that you like, you, you know who they are, they act consistently, and you care about them. You yeah. actually care about them, which is one of the prime you know, things that you've got to accomplish when you make a yeah. movie. And when they die, you're like, you're like damn, and I liked him. Right. These the, people, I wanted them to the die. Microcosm, <laughs> I wanted you don't to care. see them die. They were too stupid for you to care about. Yes. The microcosm was the, the, the male uh, scientist who was part of the, the marriage. Right, so yeah. there was the, the married couple yeah. who found the uh, the sky charts. He he like accidentally ingests some alien liquid, and he has that worm in his eye, and he tells nobody. Yeah. Oh, he, it's okay. He's infected. He's there's, infected. A, there's a worm in my eye. It happens yeah. all the time. It'll like, go. It'll go away. Like who would run screaming down the spaceship corridor if a worm poked out of like some orifice yeah. in your eye? That's yeah. ridiculous. Pass that, there, out. And, there and the this, sequel repeated that. Oh yeah, forget it. It's yeah. it's over. So there's there is a another thing that happened that I, I remember like absolutely mind blowing, was when she is in the machine, the automated surgery machine, which was cool, very very well done in my opinion, mm -hmm. and she is trying to extract the alien that's inside yeah, of her. Giving herself an abortion. So the machine cuts, cuts her right here, mm -hmm. right? And cuts through her stomach muscles to get to the uterus, to get to where the alien is, wherever it is, right? right? But they, no doubt that that thing cut through her stomach yeah. muscles. She gets staples put in, and then she's up and running. Well, yeah, that, that device, to me, that's, that device is a 
it's just a beautiful example for how bad this movie is because the, uh, the idea, the concept of an automated surgery machine is a wonderful idea that they completely, they completely destroyed. They I mean, this is something, first there was no diagnostics. You would think the first thing that would happen would be a, a detailed diagnostic, not happen. The, you think the devices, the, uh, the interfaces would be these, these uh, nuanced, subtle kind of manipulators, but it's like a claw, like it's a stupid claw. Right, like, I couldn't believe right? that. Right, and then, and then they, all right, it cuts in and it pulls this thing out. You, don't, you never really get the sense that this could do much of any, any, anything complicated. Nothing any, delicate. Any, anything, nothing, yeah. anything delicate. And, and the whole staple thing to me is, was this the icing on the cake because, because this is the point of time where they had, they had a gimme. All they needed to do was have a, a, a healing gel, a spray. You spray it, it kind of congeals and pulls Logan's everything, run every, yeah. everything together. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> heal, healing, the healing, the healing yeah. a healing laser would, would have been better. Right. But, but some kind of healing foam that would, and we would have been like, yep, cool, yeah, of course that makes sense. Yeah. What this, it's the future. Yeah. What, what this was though was it was kind of it was an automated surgery that was even a mockery of tw of twenty of modern day surgery. It was surgery. like nineteen nineties technology. Yeah, staples. Even, yeah, even yeah. then it was staples, and which of course I mean super. Officially, like, oh yeah, just staple that wound. No, right? As, as any anybody who's had that surgery would know, there's like at least three or four layers: the muscle, the fascia, you deep the skin. You, you go deep, the and then you go up, and then you're kind of held together. Just the skin. I don't care what futuristic staples you have; they're going to open up, and your guts are going to spill out. Yeah. That might have made a really cool looking scene if her intestines yeah, sure. spilled out. Oh, but <laughs> really, yeah. I like that word. Um, but uh, then she's running around and doing gymnastics. Yeah, that, like, that was the other thing. Like to five minutes later, I remember. I'm like she wouldn't be able to run. Yeah, you wouldn't again. be able yeah, to. Yeah, if you needed her to do that, do the foam thing they, or whatever. Yeah. They, they they had a gimme and they threw it. Or hep her up done. on you know do the foam thing and then hep her up on some type of drug that stimulates her or whatever to make yeah. it make sense. They, they blew a chance, an opportunity to create one of those iconic science fiction devices. They're like, yeah, I wish I had that in my basement. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but they blew it. It was a it was a joke. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the first moments of the movie. Okay. You have the yeah. alien. The, the engineer. Oh right? yeah, the, the whole the engineer on the on a Earth huge, apparently Adonis like yeah. buff. Yeah, totally looks like a statue. Ripped. Who yeah, uh, yeah, kind of like a Greek statue. Kind dissolves of. ten feet he, tall. Yeah, he drinks yeah. the liquid. Yeah, and he dissolves. And then his DNA goes into the ocean. And that's not how it works at all. That's not how biology works. No, not at right. all. On so many levels, that you could makes you could no sense. fill a planet up with other creatures' DNA and nothing would happen. Right, it would just rot and, and decay. Yeah, if there was bacteria, you there would need you would need the whole system for the life cycle. You would need cells and organelles, and you know, yeah, um, and mitochondrial but, DNA. But they made it clear that they don't believe in evolution in this yeah. movie. Because well, but I'm not the one. Does, now here's the here's my picky pedantic thing. They zoom in on the DNA, and it wasn't DNA that they showed. I mean, it was the cartoon stick and ball thing yeah. of the DNA, not what a DNA molecule would look like. So, all right, so <laughs> yeah, that's right. that I, I I would say, okay, fine. It's a that's conception. one of those things. Like, yeah, they they said this is what the audience expects DNA to look right. like, so we have to meet their expectations. But you know, how nice would it have been if they showed what DNA actually looks like rather than the cartoon of it? But that would be, I mean, this was, this movie was orders of magnitude away from doing that sort of thing. But just to, so right out of the gate, you're like, what's happening here? Yeah. How is, what, what are they implying that this is how people came about? And yeah, the planet was seeded. That's yeah. not how it would work. Panspermia actually is, is something that's... It's not off the table. It's not, yeah, it's, well, it's not, kind not of between, reasonable. Not between... Solar systems, only like within a solar system. Right. I mean, but the idea that that life could begin because of, in one of, location, of, of an another input location. from another location. Well, certainly facilitated by aliens. Fine. Sure. But you got to do more than just dump your DNA, into, right. You know, jizz into the ocean. That's not going to do it. So, but no matter how you look at it, if that DNA became us, that humans, that it makes no sense because we are clearly related to, yes. to all of the animal all life the on, animals, on the planet. Where did all the other animals come from? Right. Then? So that so that's not that that won't work. But you also couldn't have it create all of all of life either because of all these other problems that we're talking yeah. about. So what so what were they going for? Whatever they were going for they failed because it made no sense. They, Bob, no they, sense. they clearly it were saying sense. that the, that that thing it was the progenitor that yes. seeded the earth. Right, and they, for they, they have the humanity th or all of life. The on line earth. in the movie, it's like, oh, we're just going to throw out 300 years of Darwinism, Darwinism. And uh, she's like, well, that's what I choose to believe. So, okay, that's a good scientist yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So you're, yeah. you're a creationist. And and, it, and you're, just, you're just highlighting the movie's highlighting the fact that it doesn't make any sense. Right. What you can't make sense of it. You can't even retcon it. Like there's no way 
you could possibly make it make sense. It's like sense. having a homeopath doctor on the ship. Like, but, really? That's, yeah. what you, that's what you're going with? I have another thing. Um, so they, these two scientists, in the beginning, they're, they're you know, the archaeologists, and they're, they're finding the star chart. Yeah. And they, there's multiple there star go. charts. Okay. On cave, like on a cave wall, yeah. right? Five so points, really just yeah. five points, five or six points. Yeah, but they keep, like, I think they saw it multiple times. You know, and this is okay. another example. There's a pattern. So why were they there? Why was the star chart there to begin with? Why did the, why did the uh, progenitors, the guy mm -hmm. up on the screen behind us, why did one of his Engineers? species come back to Earth and put those symbols... In, and really, that's your star chart? Five dots? Yeah. Like, you can't figure anything out from that. But, but think no. about it. The planet that they, that they went to was a planet that was, it was a cache of weapons to destroy humanity. That was the point of that planet. Mm -hmm. So why would they put a star chart sending people to the planet that they're using to eventually destroy the Earth? It's right. A, it's yeah, a, that, that doesn't make any sense. But, but the, the thing about the, the, the stars on the cave wall is so ridiculous. It's, it's like from the 1950s. Oh, look, there's a star chart. You know, you need to be a little bit more sophisticated that, nowadays. You need something more complex. A some, reference point. Some glyph, some a kind reference of point. Just How about five dots? Like alien technology? Like, that would have been a cool thing for an archaeologist to right. find. Why did it have to be dots on painting? You know, like, like it was a, silly. Yeah, yeah, it's a very childish concept of what a star chart would look like. Yeah. Right. Like, right. the fact that we could pinpoint a location from that. Yeah, let alone what stellar drift would do after tens of thousands of years. You know, if it's a close yeah, yeah. by star, it's going to be moving. If, you know, it's not going to be, you know, an accurate star chart after a certain amount of years of probably, millennia. You could probably match that with thousands of different yep. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's not enough data to do that. And then with the follow-up movie, what I found interesting was it seemed as if the internet exploding did nothing. Did nothing. I don't understand. They doubled down on all, pretty much all the same Yeah, the tropes problems. and the stupid, yeah. these stupid characters. I mean, there's no protocol. It's really, yeah. I mean, even the, the, the whole carbon-14 dating, which is that yeah, throwaway, that wouldn't work either. A, throwaway, a throwaway line, uh, you know? But if you have, and for some people, if you don't know how carbon-14 works, then, then it would wash right over you. But, but I think... But why does it, it, producers why it doesn't work? Producers and directors should strive to, you know, to make the science good enough for even the somewhat scientifically literate. Well, it makes no sense because you're on an alien world and you try and the guy goes like, oh my God, a carbon, carbon 14, this dude. But, but it would never work because carbon, you carbon, dating, carbon, carbon dating all has to do with the ratio of carbon 14 to carbon 12. Because when you live on, an, on, a, on a planet, then everything that's alive, the atmosphere, everything living that, that ingests other parts of the planet is going to have a, the same ratio of carbon 14 to, car, to carbon 12. But then when you die and you're no longer taking in that anything from the environment, the carbon 14 starts decaying and you get a disparity between the two that are outside the norms of, of the rest right. of the planet. Carbon and 14 degrades into carbon 12. And so you compare the ratio of 14 to 12 mm -hmm. compared to the atmospheric ratio of 14 right. to 12. Right, and, okay. and then you can age something. Then you can, you can, then age, you something. can age something. And there's also a limit, because once you get rid of all the 14, that's the limit of right. how, so that's why it works for thousands of years, but not millions of years. Right, um, and, but the problem, the problem was is that this is, you know, this is, first off, you don't know what the, what the calibration would be needed yeah. for and for this alien world unless you do a survey of it and try to, and find it out. Yeah. But also, but all bets are off when you're dealing with an alien species because who knows what they're eating? They could be eating grapes from Altair Six and bananas from Earth. You don't know, and all and th they have different ratios of carbon fourteen yeah. and twelve. So th the fact that a scientist just said I'm on a carbon fourteen is just a throwaway line. Yeah, one like, line can like be, assuming can my can calibrations ruin. correct, yeah. and that would have been all that was needed for for. For us, you know, scientific, you know, science crazy people in the audience that love this stuff, or just like, say ah. uh, carbon fourteen won't work because we don't have a we don't have a baseline. We'll have to use this new made up yes. one I just invented. Carbon ninety seven. Yeah. Techno babble is your friend. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I prefer techno babble to wrong yes. science. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, so, so frustrating. Other than that, I love the movie. It was gorgeous. Yeah, it was. It was oh. a beautiful movie. And that makes it even worse because just, he had a budget. It was and, all there. And they he had, had our expectations. Needed. I mean, this, you know, considering who squandered it was, it. Yeah. he just squandered, threw it away. It's like you could have made something that was at least, you know, mediocre would have been okay, <laughs> you know, and he didn't even hit that. But it is fun to make fun of. Yes. Absolutely. It did It it's, did achieve something that was not... A good, a good it, episode of Alpha Quadrant 6. Yeah, it didn't exist ah. before. Yeah, the iconic bad science theater. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, so of course, send us your suggestions, guys. Yeah. We'd love to hear any movies you'd like us to tear apart. Yeah, so we're going to break down individual movies, uh, individual um, TV shows, TV series, franchises, genres. So you can go to Alpha Quadrant 6. That's Alpha Quadrant and the number 6.com if you'd like to see our website and if you'd like to also see our YouTube page. 
Yep, we'll see you next time. Thank you, guys. Thank you.